today on Tattooed Granny. Check out the timestamps in the description box to jump between chapters. Join me today. But first, two minutes of Morel Mushroom Bliss. Morel Bliss. Look for dead trees, disturbed ground, burn areas, young forests and forest edges. Morel mushrooms associate with specific tree species, which I will discuss and help you identify in one of the next segments of this video. River banks, low wet areas, mossy areas with short greenery. Uh, are great places to keep moisture for fruiting morels. Morel species fruit by their associate tree trunks along those trees root lines and canopy drip lines. They are hidden and well camouflaged amongst the forest flora. Look closely, stop, squat, and focus. Be 100% certain of your ID and cook all morel mushrooms thoroughly before consumption. Oh, the excitement of finding a bunch. Cut each morel in half vertically the long way and make sure they're hollow inside. Here we have some members of the Mochella morel genus. You'll notice they're all hollow. They're all cut in half, cap and stem. They're an ascomycete fungus, meaning a cup fungus. Where are the cups? Well, these are the cups. And as they spread apart, when the morel ages, you can see that better. And that surface of that cup is where the spores are ejected from by a water pressure. So they get about an inch or so away from the morel into the wind instead of just dropping down by a gravity. This whole structure inside here, that's the stem. That's stem. And these cups are fused to that. Um, that's how you know you have a morel. It's hollow with the cap fused onto this huge hollow opening of the stem. It has pits, not wavy ridges or anything like that. There's no tissue inside. There's nothing in here. It's hollow. Here are four common 
morel mushroom species in the genus Morchella, true morels, that can be found in the Midwest region. The common morel, Morchella americana. The half free morel, Morchella punctipes. The black morel, Morchella angusticeps. And the tulip morel, Morchella diminutiva. Morel mushrooms grow over a period of two weeks. Morels begin fruiting around March 1st and travel 100 miles north per week throughout the spring season. These signs mean it's still a little too early for morels to fruit. They like ground temperatures of about 50 to 55 degrees, 4 inches down. These plants flower just before that happens. When you start to see dandelions blooming, ant hills busy, lilacs blooming, and other later spring signs, start looking heavily for morel mushrooms to start fruiting. Here are six tree species that consistently fruit morel mushroom for me in the Midwest. There are others, but these are my faves. If you hunt old apple orchards like this, make certain that pesticides were not used. They can soak into the morels. Apple trees are another favorite for morels to fruit, especially if they're stressed dying or dead. Make sure they're from an old organic orchard so you don't get any of the pesticides. I also get mine kind of, there's a farmer field there, but if you look here, the hill rises and so the water comes down this way. And so you're not getting any of the pesticides that way. Sycamore morel mushrooms fruit a bit later in the season. This tree loves the water and is often found along riverbanks and creeks. Here's another thing to notice on the ground. Oh. These are the sycamore seed pods. So sycamore seed pods and leaves right there. See that on the ground you know you got the correct tree. And you see this weird peeling white bark? You're there. Wicked old sycamore tree. Holy My favorite tree for morel mother loads is the freshly dead American elm. Use finding the correct leaves a way to identify an elm tree rich area. 
But if you want a tree that it will fruit a lot of mushrooms, it needs to be dead. No buds or leaves. Elm seeds, they're kind of fuzzy. Elm trees are one of the first to bud out, so you can distinguish living from dead trees early. What's better than a single trunked elm tree? A double. And I'm in a honey hole. Granny. Some laying down. I think maybe I stepped on them. Some standing up. 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 Laying down. Up. In the back a bunch. Big donkeys. Little donkeys. Look. Oh, more. 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 See the leaves on this tree, it's a tulip, tulip poplar. They are tall and straight for a very long time before they start branching. Their bark is furrowed and has a yellowish cast and roots are exposed at the base. They also have a very unique leaf shape. Here we have black cherry, and I have found a Morcella diminutiva type by these. Um, these are characterized by really rough, darker colored bark, much darker than your elm, and it has a little bit different pattern. And so I do check these as well. I have some spots. I've also found the half-free Morcella punctipes by these. Now here is white ash. These are living trees I'm talking about, black cherry and white ash. And if the if the Morcella mycelium is in them and they are living, they can fruit uh eh, you know maybe up to a half dozen mushrooms in a special tree maybe a lot. But um so here's some leaves as you can look for, oh, they're real pointy and they come in sets on each branch for the white ash. I'm in the forest now, I'm looking around. I see elms, I see black cherry. Uh, here's another white ash. They have really cool branches that come out uh, perpendicular at 90 degree angles to one another. Look here, you see how they boink, boink, they come out like that? It's a good way to identify them. Sadly, um, the emerald ash borer is taking a lot of them out. Heartbreak. so much for watching today. If you learned a little something, please like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Best of luck in the 2024 morel hunting season. Morel progression videos and weather updates coming soon.